Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sarah, I'm the creator of Educating, and today we are gonna learn all about birds. Birds are a really amazing group of animals. They can be found all over the world, even in Antarctica, one of the coldest places in the whole world. And they're so amazing because you could really be anywhere and walk out your front door and chances are you're gonna see a bird. Even if you're not paying attention or looking around for one, there's probably a bird around. And they're a huge group of animal. Scientists think there's more than 10,000 species of birds, which is more than twice as many mammal species they think exist. Some scientists even think there's more than 15,000 species of birds. But remember, that's the really cool thing about science is that we're always learning and discovering new things. And because birds are such a huge group of animals, they're really different from one another. Most of the time when we think about birds, we think about them flying through the sky like a bald eagle with their big powerful wings, but not all birds fly. In fact, some birds do a lot of other things like swim, like a penguin, for example, actually uses its wings more as flippers than it does as wings. And then you've got animals like an ostrich who don't swim or fly, they spend their whole lives walking around on the ground. We call animals that walk around on the ground, we call them terrestrial. So not only do birds move around in a whole bunch of different ways, but they look really different from one another too, like in their colors. Different bird species have all sorts of colors and patterns that make them so beautiful, but even the same species can look really different from one another like a cardinal. Normally when we think of a cardinal, we think of a bright red bird that's kind of small and really cute, but actually only the boy cardinals are red. The girl cardinals are kind of boring. They're kind of gray. They're not as pretty as the boys are. And we see that a lot in birds where the boys are much more colorful and bright than the girls are. So not only do they differ in how they move, in their color, but they also can differ in their size and their shape. So picture a small little hummingbird who's really quick and flying through the sky, zipping around, and then picture something like a chicken who's kind of round and plump and isn't very fast. And then you've got an animal like a cassowary, which is a relative of an ostrich. It's kind of like an ostrich cousin. And those guys are really tall and they're kind of wide and they don't look anything like a hummingbird or a chicken. So birds are a really incredible and unique group of animals. But now that we've learned all about what makes them so different from one another, let's learn about what makes a bird a bird. One thing that makes a bird a bird is that all birds have feathers. And feathers are made of something called keratin. If you guys feel your fingernails and your hair, those are also made of keratin. They're nice and lightweight, and when a feather is made out of keratin, it makes it really easy for those birds to move around. But feathers can be used for a whole bunch of different things. So like we said before, a lot of times we think of birds flying, and feathers help with that. For an animal like a seagull who's flying around all day, those feathers are really tight together, and they help them fly. They move some of the wind out of the way, but not all birds use their feathers for flight. Some birds will actually use their feathers for waterproofing, like a pelican will. They create an oil that they'll rub all over their feathers that helps push some of the water away and keeps them dry. And if they got all wet and their feathers got heavy, it'd be really hard when they tried to get out of the water and move around. So the feathers on a pelican help them waterproof. But if you think of a vulture, they actually are gonna be using their feathers to stay warm. They'll stand up in the sun and they'll put their wings out and they let the sun beat down on their back and warm up all those feathers. And then the warm air gets trapped right up against their bodies. And lastly, feathers can also be used to help a boy bird attract a girlfriend. So if you think of an animal like a peacock, who's got those beautiful tail feathers that they'll put out in a big display, and the girls think they're really pretty, and that is how the boys will get a girlfriend. So feathers can be used for a whole bunch of different things, and birds actually have feathers that cover their entire wings, which also can be used for a whole bunch of different purposes. 
Like we mentioned earlier, all birds have wings, but they don't always use them to fly. Some birds do, like the bald eagle that we mentioned earlier, who's got a giant, almost seven foot wingspan, and those wings are really powerful, so they can fly all around using those feathers that are tight together like we just mentioned. And remember earlier we were talking about how some birds, they don't fly, they actually are much better at swimming with those wings that they have. Like the penguin we mentioned, those wings are kind of thin and the penguin's body is pretty heavy. So the small wings and the heavy body, it's not easy for them to fly. They actually can't fly at all. So they spend most of their time in the water. That's where they hunt and that's where they play. And those wings are really helpful for them to swim around and be really quick. And then remember earlier we mentioned the ostrich who has wings but doesn't use them to fly. There's another animal called an emu that looks very similar to an ostrich and is very similar in the fact that it's got these tiny wings and can't fly. Their bodies are really heavy and their wings are kind of weak and their feathers, instead of being tight together like on a bald eagle, they're kind of more like this. So when they flap their wings, air passes through and they're not actually able to fly at all. Birds may use their wings and their feathers for a bunch of different reasons, but another thing that all birds have in common is they all have a beak or a bill. And those two words, you can use either of them and both are right. They mean the exact same thing. And you can tell a lot about what a bird eats based on the size and the shape of their bill. For example, an animal that eats a lot of meat, like a hawk, they're gonna be using their sharp pointed bill as kind of a fork and knife. They need to tear away little pieces of food from whatever they might be eating. But then you have an animal like a flamingo who actually eats things that out of the water. They eat tiny little algae and crustaceans. And what they do is they flip their whole head upside down and inside their bill, they have little structures that are like this. So they'll get a mouthful of water They'll close those little structures and they trap all the food on the inside and they push the water to the outside. So we call that filter feeding and they have a really unique bill shape because of that. And then if you picture a bird like an egret who's eating a lot of fish, they have a really long sensitive bill and they'll just kind of wait and be really sneaky and then they use that long bill to stab really quick into the water so that that way they don't make a big splash and startle away all of the fish. So based on the different things that animals are eating, we can tell a lot about that. It's kind of written all over their face on their bill or their beak. The last thing we're gonna talk about today about what makes a bird a bird is that all birds lay eggs. And in order to lay eggs, these birds need to make or find a nest. And nests can be made out of a bunch of different things and they can be made in a bunch of different places too. A lot of times birds will make a nest in a tree, maybe in a dense forest where it'd be really hard to find them. Some birds will make their nest on a cliff edge or a really, really high structure up high away from any predators that might think eggs are a yummy meal. They also could be laid in a man-made structure, even like a barn or underneath a bridge, somewhere where it's kind of away from busy people, a nice quiet area. They also could be laid in the middle of an empty open field with no protection around, like a burrowing owl. But regardless of where these nests are, usually after the mama bird lays her eggs, she has to sit on them. Mom and dad have to take turns, depending on the type of bird, to sit on the nest and keep those eggs nice and warm. And when they do that, when they keep the eggs warm, we call that incubation. So after a while of mom and dad incubating the eggs, the baby birds will pop out of their shells. And we call baby birds chicks. And chicks sometimes when they hatch, they're ready to go. They'll, they're up, they follow mom and dad around, kind of like a quail. They're able to protect themselves right away. But then there's some birds, like a robin, who when the chicks are born, they're not able to protect themselves. They actually have to stay in the nest for a while and mom and dad have to go out and get food and bring it back to them so they can get bigger and stronger and eventually be able to protect themselves. 
All right, you guys, before we wrap up today, let's just do a really quick review about what we learned today about what makes a bird a bird. So the first thing that we learned was that all birds have feathers. They might not use them to fly. They might use them to stay warm or to attract a girlfriend, but they all have them. All birds also have wings. Again, they might not be used for flying. They could help with swimming like in a penguin. All birds have a beak or a bill, and we can use that beak or bill to figure out what they like to eat. And lastly, all birds lay eggs in a nest somewhere. So I hope you guys have learned a lot about birds today. We had a lot of fun talking to you guys. Uh, make sure that if you want to learn a little bit more, you go check out some of those awesome resources on our website. And we are so excited to see you guys next week when we are talking about reptiles.